back with another video. So today I wanted to uh, talk a little bit about what it was like living um, with a hoarder. <laughs> so my mom, um, she loved shopping. Um, she'd go shopping every Sunday and Monday every week. Um, and she worked um, Tuesday through Saturday and she went shopping every Sunday and Monday. So her shopping would be, you know, on Sunday she would do her nails, do her hair, she'd go out to eat, um, and then um, we'd go to the mall and she'd go into the high-end stores like um, Coach and Louis Vuitton and um, just high-end stores and spend easy five hundred to a thousand dollars on purses, jewelry, wallets, um, clothes, perfume, um, anything. So she had expensive taste. Um, and she did this every single week, um, like clockwork. Um, but um, my great grandfather was a hoarder. Um, her grandfather was a hoarder. Um, he loved yard sales, garage sales. So he would pick up um, kids' toys and um, he would give toys to you know kids on the street so if there's kids playing in the neighborhood he'd go outside he'd give them toys and books and you know things that they can play with he'll just you know give it to them so um, my great-grandfather was very generous um, and he did that almost every day um, until he couldn't do it anymore but um, just throughout the years that's what he would do every single Saturday and Sunday. He would go to yard sales um, around the city and he would pick up kids toys, clothes, just mainly toys for kids. And then he would give them away to <laughs> kids in the neighborhood or he'll come by our house, my cousins, you know, and he'll give us bags of toys or boxes of toys um, but you know if you know anything about um, anyone that whores you know they don't like their stuff being touched or messed with and if it is they're notice well my great-grandfather noticed when you touched anything um, and he would know what was missing so you know like you know, me and my cousins, you know, we knew, okay, if we go into his home, not to touch anything because he had boxes, I'm, I'm talking about like boxes to the ceiling and there was a little walkway from the front door to the kitchen and to the bedroom. So it was like a little walkway like this, like a little <laughs> zigzag. Um, and then there was a tiny little walkway barely to the back door. Um, and then that was closed in. It was supposed to be like a back porch, but he also used that as storage for his, you know, yard sale stuff. And, you know, we'd go over there and we'd go through the boxes and, you know, he would tell us, don't touch anything. Um, I'm gonna give you what I wanna give you and you're gonna be happy with it. So that's the way he was. So, you know, if we seen something that we liked, we had to ask, hey, you know, I like this toy, I like this doll, you know, I like this toy car, you know, can I have it? Um, and, you know, sometimes he would say, no, put it back. I have stuff here for you. And, you know, we had to like, okay, you know, <laughs> we're just, you know, but um, that's just what he did. So his daughter, um, which is my mom's mom um, She was also a hoarder um, But she would hoard food 
Um, she would hoard clothes and she would go shopping for the entire family all year. So when she would do her shopping with my mom on Mondays, because my mom and her would go shopping every Monday, and um, she would buy something for someone in the family, you know, she'd see a shirt or a hat or a wallet or toys for one of us kids, and she'd pick it up, and she'd put it in her spare bedroom, and she had little gift bags for everybody, and they were like tall gift bags, and she just, packet full of candy, jewelry, uh, toys, clothes, shoes, whatever she wanted, um, and um, all year. So, um, but, you know, her house was clean. So, um, it wasn't, you know, um, her hoard wasn't certain areas like when it came to food her um laundry room latility room had all the food so she'd have food you know in that space and then she would have food um in the kitchen and then all the drawers in the house so if there was a drawer she'd have her candy drawers so she'd have one drawer with chocolate one drawer with um, gum, um, mints, um, junk food. <laughs> so, um, she'd have a drawer just specifically for the kids where we'd have our snacks, our chips, our cereals, you know, our fruit snacks, um, things like that. Um, and, you know, she would, um, just, Every week she'd go shopping, she'd go food shopping, and she'll buy what's on sale. So, um, hoarders, they have a lot of stuff because nine times out of ten, they're most likely buying the deals, whatever's on sale, and they get, you know, my grandmother would, you know, we'd go shopping and she'll see a pair of, I remember this specifically. One Monday, um, you know, me and my sister, you know, at least once out of a month or every two months, we would bribe my mom into letting us stay home, calling it a sick day so we can go shopping with them because, you know, we wanted, we didn't want to go to school. So um, on those days, I would, we would split up. My sister would go with my mom and I would go with my grandmother because I was close to my grandmother and my sister would go with my mom and they'd go shopping together and you know being in one store you know my grandmother you know she'd go into her area and she'll find a pair of shorts that she liked and she'd be like okay find this pair of shorts in this size and every color I want them so she'd give me like a job to do so I have to go through all the racks and I thought it was just really fun. Not really, you know, I knew, you know, um, my mom and my grandmother had a shopping addiction and a hoarding addiction, addiction, but I was so used to it. I didn't see it as um, them hoarding um, until I watched the show Hoarders. And then I was like, oh, my great-grandfather, my grandmother, my mom, you know, were hoarders. Um, but I knew that they had a lot, a lot of stuff. And they would go for the discounted clothes, shoes, and things like that. My grandmother, she'd go through all the sales. So if we're in the grocery store and there was, you know, a chip sale and all the chips were like 320 you know, three, you know, 250 or five dollars two for five she'd buy everything for two for five that's on sale because that's just the way she shopped she shopped big so um and you know her thing was food and clothes she had a lot of clothes in her walk-in closet and it was um just mainly just clothes like she'd have 
every color in that one particular shirt or you know shorts or um, just anything that she liked she had to get in every color and um, but then with my mom she was more like me when it came to hoarding where I have a little bit of everything I have costume jewelry I have clothes I have perfume and lotion and beads and purses and you know I was like my hoarding was just it wasn't just particular you know just one thing it was just a lot of everything um, that's you know my mom she would have her you know but she would do it you know she'd have her expensive things so she'd have all her coach Gucci Louis Vuitton um, Bernie and Dirk all her you know high-end purses she'd buy um, and she'd have like a hoarded like mount of purses when it came to clothes she had clothes in every closet I'm not kidding she took over their closet full of clothes then she took over the closet in the spare bedroom by the um, the first room over here she took over this room across the hall at one point that was full of clothes when we were kids so you know she had like three closets full of clothes and her drawers um, and then she'd have an area you know like you know I used to do this before I put my um, jewelry boxes over here in this corner that corner or this corner one or the other two had amounts of clothes toys whatnot well she did that when it came to clothes so when she went shopping it could be just anything bags purses clothes perfume she would put them in a corner and then she'd go through it later and she'll sort through what she has and um she had a corner full of just bags of stuff that she purchased a lot of the times when it came to her hoarding um she had a lot um when it came to perfume she used to have um uh like a um a vanity full of perfume and she filled that up like full of perfume she filled it up but you know she would like sneak you know when it came to you know purchasing you know she would hide her purchases because it you know she already had you know a large quantity of it and she would sneak and she would go shopping and she'll buy you know a $500 coach purse and she would hide it and she would stick it in the corner and she'll hide it under a bunch of bags and you know she her shopping wasn't necessarily out of control but her she had very expensive taste so she would you know spend easy five hundred to a thousand dollars um over a weekend just on handbags and clothes and perfume and whatnot and you know she would tell you know me and my sister um you know uh i don't have money for you <laughs> like don't ask me for anything meanwhile you know while me and my sister at school you know we would you know during the weekend when you know we would go shopping we would point things out of stuff that we wanted and um monday when she would go shopping she would have those things that we asked for so um that was just her way of you know just surprising us so you know we you know we go out and we'll see you know a toy that we wanted or um, a shirt or a blouse that we wanted or it could be um, an iPod or something and we'll be like oh 
you know, I want this new iPod and she'd be like, no, I'm not buying that for you right now. But then we knew, okay, Monday's coming. She always has something for us when we come home. So she'd go and, you know, she'd buy us a little something. It could be a new outfit. It could be um, color books, word searches, um, a new purse or some hair accessories or something. We knew when Monday came and we got home from school, she was gonna have, you know, some stuff for us that she bought when she went out shopping. So um, that was just her way of like surprising us. Um, and um, when it came to me, um, my hoarding started, um, you know, when we and my sister were kids, you know, we were very spoiled, you know, we, we asked for something nine times out of 10, we got it. Um, when it came to expensive gifts, um, we knew, you know, we wrote a list, um, of 10 items that we wanted no no limit when it came to a price so we had no no limit we had to write down 10 items each that we really wanted and then five combination gifts that we wanted for you know that we both can share together and um those gifts were received on christmas so um she never really had a limit when it came to her spending and with me what happened with me with my hoarding um it just you know i grew up um very spoiled um and i always most likely you know nine times out of ten i got what i wanted so, um, me and my sister would play, you know, the parents, you know, we would, you know, my dad would tell me yes, my mom would tell me no, vice versa, and we would, <laughs> they both would argue back and forth, you know, but dad told me yes, but I told you no, and then they would argue, and then, um, Sometimes we get our way, other times it would just be like, no, <laughs> you know, leave us alone. Um, but um, I was a very, um, you know, when it came to my relationships, um, I was very giving um, and I, I'm the type of person where I want to help people and you know, I have a very giving heart and, you know, I was dating this guy for about five years and the first year that, you know, we started dating, um, he was very sweet, you know, he surprised me with a new iPod that he had um, furbished and uh, he engraved our names into it and it was a very sweet gift um and you know um he gave me a huge basket on valentine's day and whatnot and um he was just a very given person he, he would take me out to eat and um when he um he slowly started um feeling very depressed and um, when we started having our um, problems in our relationship, um, you know, it, it just, you know, he would, he would come to me and, you know, he'd be short on cash and, you know, he'd say, hey, you know, I want this new video game at GameStop, can you buy it for me? And I'm like, okay, that's fine. Um, and, you know, I would buy him his new game and, you know, I would, I bought him his game system. You know, I, I was very giving in that way. I would pay his phone bill a few times and, 
you know it it slowly um he, he started taking advantage of my generosity when you know i was working in the daycare at 19 um i um you know i was getting paid pretty well um and you know um he actually showed me you know when you know i set up my account and everything he actually showed me how to withdraw money and how to put money in and everything i didn't know any of this you know and he showed me how to do it and slowly you know he started taking advantage and saying hey you know i want to get a new you know uh ps4 i said okay um i gave him the money i withdrew the four hundred dollars for his ps4 and i bought him the ps4 that he wanted and some games um and at this time you know every week or every few days we'd go to the bank and every time i would i would have a pay you know every time i would get paid and my dad would put the money in the bank he would say hey you know did you get paid and, and i was very naive and i would say yes and he'd take me to the bank we'd withdraw two three hundred four hundred dollars and then we'd go shopping and i'd buy him fast food clothes um games especially video games and you know things like that and um slowly you know my stuff started um he started stealing from me my video game started coming up missing um he would take the controller um or the co or the or the cord for the controller he'd take that um my money would come up missing he would um you know after withdrawing the money he would take the money out of my wallet and you know slowly my stuff just started disappearing and stuff just coming up missing and i started losing all my things and um when i got with my boyfriend that i'm with now of it's gonna be nine years um literally i literally i didn't have nothing in my room i had just my tv my game system i had maybe two or three games no perfume like i didn't have nothing i didn't have none of this stuff nothing my room was completely empty and when i got with my boyfriend he just he spoiled me even more and he'd buy me games clothes perfume everything and you know i just i started hoarding because it felt good to have stuff again you know he he's the one that bought me all the beads and the containers and most of the perfume and you know the cart that i have here he bought that rolling cart for my you know bees and stuff he bought me some of the purses that's here on my door just everything you know and he started filling up my room with stuff that i lost and i just started hoarding and you know i remember him telling me you know now that he's not in your life anymore you don't have to worry about your things coming up missing and you can be you can have things again you know you can you don't have to worry about anything getting stolen or coming up missing and um i just i felt comfortable having things again and that's where my hoarding really began you know um and uh but even though i do have a hoarding problem i'm comfortable with it i feel safe and i feel safe surrounded by all my things and i love it i feel comfortable i feel safe with all my things even though it's it's organized i'm an organized hoarder um it's clean 
you know, but um, I do suffer from that as well. Um, but yeah, so that's a little bit um, about us and what it was like, you know, living with a family of hoarders. Um, <clears throat> Part two, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, my mom's animal hoarding. That's going to be in part two. It's a lot. It's it's <laughs> it's a lot. Um, but yeah, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, like, share, subscribe, comment, and thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.